Okay, welcome to the lecture number 49. So, uh, in the past we have been discussing about uh, the gyroscope. So, uh, that was a simplified case where the weight of the outer and the inner frame it was neglected and therefore, only the rotor mass was considered and rotor inertia was considered. Now, we will today we will start with the uh, reaction wheel uh, and uh, what we call as the gyro state basically the gyro state uh, we can uh, broadly gyro state is a term where we have uh, some part of the system it's a moving with respect to the other part okay so if i, I will write the formal definition a gyro state one or more rotating rigid bodies inside it Okay, so let us consider uh, this is a cylindrical satellite. Okay. To this we have another rotor is attached. So say this is the rotor and this is a rotating part and this is non rotating part so about this axis this is the upper part is rotating so thereby you know that already we have discussed that if, uh, if we have any rotating wheel as in the previous example the in the previous lecture we have observed that if we have a rotating wheel which is rota spinning about its axis. So, then it tries to maintain its direction and if it is perturbed ok. So, if, uh, if you perturb so that there is an angular ve vector associated with this say this is the h angular vector. So, if you try to perturb it so, it try it resists it, it resists this motion basically you need an external torque to change this orientation. But however, if you apply a torque along this axis itself means you are applying a torque tau along this axis means along the axis of rotation ok. So, in that case it would not be able to resist this torque. Okay. So, basically this will speed up. So, its stability along this axis is uh, stability due to torque along this line uh, as shown here. Okay. So, the stability in, in rotation it is not maintained. Okay. So, this implies that we cannot have three axis stability for a rotating wheel because in the direction of uh, the axis about which it is rotating along that axis it cannot tolerate disturbance it will simply speed up along that direction. Okay. Now, uh, so, this is the same case. So, if you have a rotor either this part may be rotating or either this part may be rotating, rotating sometimes it may happen that you have a satellite where there may be antenna for communication purpose or it may be transponder ok. So, this transponder is pointing toward the earth 
or pointing towards some uh, it may be some optical instrument which is pointing towards some particular direction while this part is rotating and this is non rotating and this is rotating part. So, larger the size of the satellite ok larger this part here this part is small you can see that this rotating part is large here. So, this will resist the external torque more, but not along the axis of rotation ok. It can resist along the th other three axis, but not along the axis of rotation. So, if, uh, so the another configuration for this we can have like uh, I have a satellite ok and inside this itself there is a wheel. and this wheel is rotating. So, this kind of configuration which is inside the system this is often this is called the bias momentum satellite. In it is quite often that uh, a bias momentum means a, a permanent A 0 is given along certain direction and moreover by rotating this wheel you will be able to change the orientation of the main body ok. If you try to speed up this wheel ok H 0 you are giving right in the beginning. So, this is the initial angular momentum of the wheel this is the initial angular momentum of the wheel. So, thereafter if you speed up this particular wheel then obviously, you can control the rotation along this axis for along this axis for this satellite. So, in this particular part we call this as the bias momentum satellite or it can happen that inside the satellite along the three axis you have three wheels along this axis then along this axis and along this axis. So, you have three along the three axis you have three wheels and by controlling the speed of these wheels then you you are able to. Uh, so, these are the wheels and by rotating the wheels or speeding up applying torque to this wheel by using certain motor then we can orient the satellite along particular direction we can change its angular velocity and so on. So, this kind of configuration it is a called the reaction wheels reaction wheel. So, they, these are acting as the reaction wheels okay. and already we have discussed about the gyroscope. So, instead of that this axis remain being fixed ok, this axis can be tilted by a applying a motor here in this place and thereby also the torque can be generated and that configuration we call as the control moment gyroscope. So, we will take up that issue later on first uh, we are today going to discuss about the mechanics of uh, this gyro state and especially we will start with that. Uh, we have this configuration and uh, in this particular configuration then uh, we will derive the equation of motion for this and then we will general generalize this to uh, this configuration. And with this configuration this is also applicable ok, uh, the same equation can be applied here. But if you have a situation something like this that this is a satellite and this is rotating along the three axis and together with this say uh, here some telescope is mounted ok. There is a telescope here which you are using for measuring some distant uh, angles for the stars or whatever it may be. So, uh, in that case you may be rotating this telescope 
along the maybe the uh, about this axis or about uh, an axis perpendicular to this paper which is going inside okay so the three axis control can be done for this telescope so in that case what happens this becomes two system one system is here and another system we can assume it to be attached to this point okay here we have the axis for this and this system is moving with respect to this and this system is also moving so this kind of system is a dual system okay so this is also a dual system but this case is simplified because this axis is going inside this and it just appears like this inside being in uh, instead of being inside the satellite it is just uh, lying outside okay but there uh, these two cases are the same H however this case is different because it can rotate it can have uh, this part can have 3 degrees of freedom with respect to this part so this kind of system we call as the dual spin system where this part is rot rotating separately this part is rotating separately here also this part it it can rotate in certain direction but inside this this is also rotating along with this and together with this it has its own rotation it has rotation on its own axis also so uh, let us take this problem so what we conclude from the previous discussion that directional stability for the spin axis can be ensured but no stability about the the spin axis itself moreover we have already observed that uh, if a system you are given a system say this kind of system and you have another the cylindrical system okay this kind of system if it is rotating about this axis and this is rotating about this axis and if there is certain dissipation of energy inside so if energy is getting dissipated this issue we have already discussed and derived also then it is not stable okay its a directional stability cannot be maintained though you may be thinking that this about this axis uh, at least a, uh, the spin axis stabilization can be done means uh, directional stability of the spin axis can be maintained but this is not true as we have discussed earlier also because this is the minor axis rotation minor axis rotation so therefore the spin axis stability is not possible if the energy dis is getting dissipated then it is not stable spin is axis directional stability directional stability is lost however this case this is rotating about its major axis major axis rotation and therefore if if in normal cases that we have uh, if it is perfectly rigid
perfectly rigid which is an idealization then it will have directional stability about the spin axis. So, this kind of configuration which is uh, rotating about this axis and if there is any energy dissipation. So, ultimately what will happen that it will come to a configuration it is a because the angular momentum vector in the absence of external torque it cannot change. So, still it will keep rotating along this direction the angular momentum cannot change in the absence of torque. So, it will start rotating about this axis and this axis will come to this position and uh, the one of the this minor axis will come to this position. Okay. So, the rotation axle will, will get interchanged and this we have discussed also when we have done the derivation etcetera uh, for the t, t dot case uh, when it will be negative okay. and uh, theta dot when it is less than 0. So, if it is theta dot where we have written as the if this is the h vector. So, from here we have measured the theta means the deviation of the axis from this this is the nutation angle. So, if this is negative means the theta will be decreasing it will be stable theta dot if it is greater than 0 means the theta dot will grow and the system will unstable be, will become unstable. So, this case we have already discussed in quite details. So, this we are just uh, recapitulating before uh, getting into the derivation of what we are looking for. So, what we conclude here the major axis rule means if it is rotating about the major axis does not guarantee stability for a structurally So, we have assumed that energy dissipation is there, but we have not assumed that the system was structurally flexible. Okay. So, this case we have not done. So, uh, as you grow professionally you will see that you will have more and more complex system and uh, if you know the basics the very important part is here that if you know the basics how to approach the problem then you will be able to deal with the problem. So, let us consider the system as follows. So, this is your initial frame and then you have a body here this is the point O about which we fix the body axis E 1 cap E 2 cap these are the unit vectors or the basis vectors. Okay. And then we have a rotating disc here and along this direction let us say that E cap or either we can use the notation E a cap this is the unit vector along this direction along the axis of the rotating wheel okay. and the center of mass of the wheel is here. So, uh, the vector to this
this is your E 2 cap here on this side. So, this vector we can write as R center of mass of the wheel. Okay. So, R C m wheel we can write this as let us say that we write this as the B vector. This is the radius vector of the center of mass of the wheel. Okay, so, what we are interested in that uh, see if, uh, I can just approach in a shortcut way that assuming that uh, this wheel is located on one of the body axis and I simplify the system okay, and do it very quickly, okay. but I just want to go through a general approach which will be very useful if you have to really work out certain problem. So, the center of mass of we, we will tag all the system as say uh, this we tag as B means the B stand for the main body excluding the will. and this we tag as w. So, w stands for the rotating wheel ok. Accordingly, we can define the m which is the total mass of the system. system equal to m b plus m w. So, mass of the body this equal to mass of the main body plus mass of the wheel. Okay, so, uh, and let us assume that somewhere uh, here the this is the center of mass of the main body. Okay, so, the combined center of mass therefore, we can write Okay, again we will have to uh, show it by a vector. So, I need to rub it out. And Okay. Let us say this is the center of mass of the R C m. Uh, this the R C m will we have written by B. So, this, this is uh, R C m body, this is R C m capital body. So, R C m body this can uh, we can give some other notation to this maybe if, uh, maybe we can write this as the something like uh, R 
R C uh, okay we write this as the R capital B just to indicate this is for the main body and this we have written for will. So, instead of B we can also write this as R w. So, these are the notation configuration we can choose on our own. Okay. So, let us proceed and wherever uh, the way we require, so we will define the corresponding variable. linear momentum of the main body. This main body also this is called the platform, platform sometimes the uh, also the casing of the satellite say if, uh, this is a satellite. Okay. So, this is the satellite casing. Okay. So, this is basically a honeycomb structure means uh, the casings are made of panel which uh, inside just like the honey bee is having its hive. So, the same way this uh, structure is there. So, you will see this is hollow and on the two sides of thin plates are pasted to uh, make it light and also give it a strength. Okay. So, this is also called sometimes the satellite bus satellite so for calculating the linear momentum of the main body which we will write as pb we write this as P B. So, P B will be equal to we have to linear momentum is mass times velocity. So, the velocity of any point. So, this is your main body and inside that there is a wheel. So, that wheel you just remove it. Okay. So, and this is your point O and already we have derived this also this is E 1, E 2 and E 3, these are the three body axis. Okay, this point we have taken as O, if this is any mass delta m or d m, okay, v is the velocity of this mass. So, v times d m, this is the r, the distance of this mass from the point O. So, this becomes your linear momentum and this integration is to be done over the main body. And as you know that we are referring this with respect to the inertial frame which is E 1, E 2 and E 3. Okay. So, therefore, V can be written as V 0 plus this we have discussed. So, I am not taking up it again and say this is the omega is the angular velocity of this main body. So, omega cross r d m this becomes its linear momentum. So, V 0 d m this is the integration over the body plus omega cross r d m. So, m v 0 and plus omega cross r d m this is nothing but r center of mass of the wheel times mass of uh, sorry center of uh, mass of the main body plus mass of the main body. And this notation we have kept it for this as 
R B. So, in the sort we can write this as m v 0 plus omega times m this is the center of mass of the main body. Okay, the same way uh, we can also derive the linear momentum of the uh, your uh, rotating wheel. Okay. So, again we have this is E frame and this is the body frame E 1, E 2 and E 3 this is point o and say the wheel is located here center of mass is here whose radius vector we are writing as b okay so now i will expand this say th this is the radius vector of this wheel i will make it little larger to look it good So, this is center of mass of the wheel which we have b equal to r c m w okay. and here is your frame. Okay. If we take any mass in this body which is d m and let us say this is the velocity v and we can tag this as v w. So, according to the our earlier derivation. So, this is your point O, this is frame E here. Okay. So, P will will be equal to v w d m and v w will be equal to v 0 plus velocity of the point B with respect to point O. So, that it is a because we are assuming this to be a rigid body. So, the only part that can arise here is omega 0 or omega cross where omega is the angular velocity of the main body okay. omega cross. then uh, this distance which is b okay, and plus if we have the angular velocity of the uh, say this wheel is also rotating about this axis and let us say omega w. So, omega w we write as the angular velocity of the and this is the absolute angular velocity of the wheel. So, that means, with respect to this point this mass is also rotating. Okay. So, that we need to take into account. So, we have to write for that also. So, that will be equal to omega will cross rho, where rho is this vector. Okay. That means, from the point this is point O and this is the let us say this is point uh, we, we can write this as the point maybe uh, point P. Okay. So, this is point P here and this is any point here some arbitrary mass which we can refer as point let us say A. whose radius vector from this place to this place is rho. So, from this place to this place the radius vector this becomes this vector we have defined as b okay. 
this vector we have defined as b so and this is rho so this vector becomes b plus rho okay and then if we integrate so you should always do a systematic analysis and this habit will make you solve any kind of problem okay if we try to memorize certain things then it becomes difficult to reproduce it okay but we are if we are systematic at working then it's always possible that whenever the problem is given we can do the problem okay therefore the pw this we can write as v0 obviously v0 is a constant uh, this is not dependent on the not constant i mean this uh, does not depend on the integration the integration is over mass so this is mass independent therefore we can write this as v0 times m and this is uh, over the will okay so this is over the will not over the body so here we need to correct it this is over the will so we'll write as mw and then plus omega cross b m so this these two parts they will stay and what about this part this part we have rho dm and integration over the will okay so you can see that this is the point p is the center of mass and rho is being measured from this point okay so rho is being measured from this point this is your rho vector it's a being measured from point p which is located at the center line of this wheel therefore being the center of mass this quantity is going to be zero and we get pw this equal to mw mw v0 plus mw or omega cross so the total linear momentum the p can be written as p main body plus the p will okay so the p main body is this quantity mv0 mv0 plus omega cross m times rb mb times rb here we have not written we should write here mb this is for the body so this is mb mb we have written here so it should also be there so this and plus from the previous step mw times v0 mw times v0 plus omega cross mw b omega w times omega cross mw b we can combine them together it 
is m w times b this we can also write as c or we can put a tag c w here. Similarly, m b times r b where r b is the location of the center of mass of the main body this can be written as c b. Okay, uh, these notations uh, should not become confusing at any stage. So, uh, maybe this uh, this maybe we can change it to R P. So, if we change it to R P, so this will become R P omega cross R P and then we can write this as R p here also we can change it to R p this is R p and this is the combined center of mass multiplied by total mass. So, this becomes same this part m v 0 plus omega this is the angular velocity cross total mass times the combined center of mass okay, which obviously we will write as R c m this is the R c m total. So, your R C m this equal to m b plus r b plus m w times r p ok. Instead of p we could also have written here the w to indicate this is the will center of mass. So, divided by m b plus m w. So, this is the location of the this is the center of mass of the whole system combined with the wheel. Ok, so we our conclusion is P equal to m v 0 plus omega cross m R C m. So, we will continue in the next lecture and uh, in the next lecture we are going to discuss about the we have just now worked out the linear momentum and discuss some preliminary regarding this. So, in the next lecture we will be discussing about the angular momentum of this system and thereafter uh, if there is some external torque acting on the system then how its angular momentum will change. So, the basically we are going to derive the equation of motion for both force and the moment related to the force and the moment. So, rotational dynamics as well as translational dynamics. So, thank you very much.